my name's Lydia and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing the unpopular book opinions tag after watching Rose's video that she did I think last week and I thought time to do that one. I do want to do more of these sort of tag videos, easy way to boost my content and not burn out trying to think of ideas. This is nine questions that force you to reveal your unpopular opinions. Question number one is a popular series that you don't like. There are probably quite a few for this but the first one that I came across when I was scrolling my goodreads was Scythe by Neil Schusterman. I hated this book. I haven't read the series obviously so I don't know if it gets better but I don't want to based on the first book. I read this as an audiobook two years ago and on goodreads I gave it two out of five and said that there were too many characters and it was boring and I didn't care about anyone and I only finished it for the sake of finishing it. So yeah, not a good book for me. But I see so many people raving about it and it's one of those where I'm like, did I read a completely different book? So I don't know if I was just worn out from reading maybe or if the audiobook was a bad idea. I don't know if I would enjoy it more if I read it as a physical copy or if it was just the wrong book for me at that time. I know I was very tired traveling I remember like hate listening to it when I was on the train from JFK into the city. So maybe I was just a bit overwhelmed and it was the wrong book for me at that time. I'll never know because I don't think I plan to reread it unless I come across it in a charity shop. Like I'm not going to go out of my way to buy it again. And I don't think I want to try the audio again because in general, if I don't like an audio book, I'm not going back to it. That's a lot of time to waste. The next question is the opposite. So this is a book series that you love that most people don't seem to like and for me this is Stags by M.A. Bennett. It only has like 3.5 or maybe even lower on Goodreads but this is one of my favourite series of all time. The latest book, the fourth book, isn't actually very good but the first three books are phenomenal. Um, they are Stags, Tigers and Foxes maybe? No, Stags, Dogs and Tigers. Stags, Dogs and Foxes. Tigers is the bad fourth book. So this is a series about a girl who gets a scholarship to go to this really fancy boarding school and she gets embroiled in stags which is the, um, I can't remember exactly what it stands for but it's the old like school society and the school is run by kind of like monk type people, the abbots and things and there's this dark underbelly to it all where the rich popular white students hunt fish and I can't remember what the, the other word is, like hunting and fishing and they are targeting other students and hunting them for fun and for sport and it's so gripping, there's so many layers to it, so much history in there as well and I'm just, I found it so impressive. I could not stop reading it. I got an early copy of the second book and I read it on the train down to Yalk in 2019 and I got to meet M.A. Bennett there and she said I was the first person to have finished it that she knew of, which was really exciting. And I just absolutely loved it. I thought it was phenomenal. The fourth book is a bit of an outlier in the series because it takes place in India. Um, it's about one of the, it's the protagonist's boyfriend's family. It's about his dad who went to this school when he was a child. And it just kind of didn't really fit with the rest of the series. And there were some remarks about India that made me uncomfortable from the author because she's a white woman from England so that just didn't work for me and it was really short it was like 270 pages where the others are like 350 400 so it just kind of felt like she didn't know what to write and wanted to drag it out a bit because I know there's going to be a fifth book in the series which hopefully is going to return to the school and Greer and the mystery that we've been following. The first three books are fantastic and I absolutely loved them and most people don't seem to they rate them really low. Question number three is a book with a love triangle where the protagonist ends up with a person you don't want them to end up with. For me this is To All The Boys I Loved Before. I love this series. I devoured all three books. I can't remember which book it was. I think it was the second book where Lara Jean has a sort of thing with John Ambrose. I loved John Ambrose. I really wanted her to end up with him. I thought they had way more chemistry and he was a much better character, but she didn't. She ended up with Peter. I really would have liked to have seen what would happen if Lara Jean and John Ambrose had got together. I just thought they made a really good couple. I haven't actually seen the second and third of the To All The Boys I Love Before films. I know there was a random cast change for John Ambrose. I don't really know why. I haven't looked into it. I'm not that 
interested or first to be honest that is the only one i can think of where there's a love triangle question number four is a popular genre that you hardly reach for i would have to still say fantasy i am reading it a lot more at the moment because i'm trying to sort of branch out and take recommendations from people i trust and people i like but it's still not one that i read a ton of i do veer a lot more towards mystery and thriller I love a good YA mystery. I enjoy a good contemporary as well and romance and sci-fi and fantasy is something I'm still dipping my toes into. I do have a lot of it on my shelves though at the moment because a lot comes in book boxes and it's one that I'm still sort of finding my feet with and figuring out what I like and how intense the fantasy I like and can take. Some of my favourite books are now fantasy so it's one I'm trying to reach for a lot more. Number five is a popular or beloved character that you don't like. This one is hard for me. I can't really think of many. I'm sure there are popular characters that I've not liked because I remember raving about them in some of my reviews, but I can't think of any now except for Aristotle and Dante from the book. I think it's like Aristotle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe. Fucking hated that book. It sucked. It's so bad. I hated both the characters. Nothing worked it was shit and my sister and I both listened to the audio and were laughing about how bad it was and how awkward and unrealistic so I guess Aristotle and Dante they are really popular characters the book gets like 4.5 or something stupidly high on Goodreads people love it it's their favorite book for a lot of people and I hated it hated the characters hated the plot hated the writing so yeah I guess they're popular characters that I hated <laughs> Question number six is an author that you can't get into. I'm gonna have to say Holly Bourne for this. She's really popular in a lot of the categories I enjoy, like YA contemporary and adult contemporary, but I hate her books. I read Pretending and I hated it. It was terrible. I posted a rant review of it and it's like my most popular review on Goodreads now. It was shit. I gave it two. Um, I don't know why I even gave it a two. I think it's probably more of a one star because I really hated it. It was just annoying. The protagonist was really fat phobic and rude and horrible to her friends. I just hated it. And I thought maybe it's just that book. So I tried, I tried reading How Do You Like Me Now as well. I think I gave it a three stars, but again, that seems far too high. <laughs> I've just reread through my reviews of Pretending and How Do You Like Me Now and they isolate the books in them and in my memory I hate the books but I gave them two and three stars so I've bumped them both down to one because I hated them they sucked and I can't get into Holly Bourne's books I'm not gonna try another one of hers I, I know a lot of my friends love her books and my sister really likes her books and people keep trying to get me to read them but I'm not going to because I've read two that I despised so I'm not gonna waste my time on someone who I know I'm not gonna enjoy. The next question is a popular book trope that you don't like. And I'm sure there are tons of these because there are so many tropes that I just think are really overdone and I'm sick of. But the one that jumps out is Insta Love where the reader is not convinced in this relationship. I understand Insta Love, that's fine. If we can see why there's insta love and there is some sort of charm or connection but when it's just the author telling us that this character loves this other character and we are told about the reasons why but they don't make any sense i can't bear it especially if it's just as a plot device if there's insta love there has to be a reason and it has to be written compellingly and we as the reader have to be able to buy it because insta love is totally realistic if you write it well and so often it's written terribly and the protagonist is just like oh I love this person so much blah 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 like it'll be some kid in a school hallway who is in love with some jock who they've had no connection with and no interaction with and it just pisses me off because it's not realistic and it comes off as like lazy and cheap writing which you can do so much better than that there are ways to write insta love and have it be compelling I don't rely on like lazy just telling us that they're in love and telling us that this character is great when they're not or not that we can see anyway show them being great show them being lovable and insta love worthy i could talk a lot more about tropes that i love because obviously they're the ones that i want to think about but i don't know if there is a trope that you love question no there's no question about tropes you love there are lots that i do love and one of my favorites is when things like oh there's only one bed 
but the characters acknowledge that and like they know it's a trope and it's just I don't know I really enjoy that sort of thing and I love a story within a story that gets me every time I love when a book is about more than just the story if that makes sense like there's another story going on especially if there's a book within a book but not like there's a whole book inside the book just something that's alluded to and you can tell that the author has like gone to great pains to plot out two stories for one book I love that Question number eight is a popular book or series that you have no interest in reading. I have a lot of these. I'm going to start off with, well see the authors that are in my head at the moment are the Blooming Realms of Ruin authors and there are quite a few of their series that I've got no interest in. So Ransom Riggs, I have no interest in the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children series. I tried it once, didn't like it, couldn't get through the first book. And Tahira Murphy, the Shatter Me series, I could not care less about it and I don't know why it's so big when those covers are so terrible. They're like someone just slapped two images together on filming word art in 2003. I hate the covers. They are so trashy and shit. And I've read one of Tahiri Murphy's books. Um, the one she published a few years ago, something to do with The Great Expanse maybe. Um, and I really didn't enjoy it. I, I think I probably gave it a meh three stars in hindsight. It had nothing going for it and I didn't enjoy the writing. But yeah, I have no interest in any of her books. They are a married couple, by the way, which I didn't realise until recently. Don't want to read the books. Also, like Sarah J Maas, she has those two series that I always thought were one series. It's like A Quarter Thorn of Roses and Throne of Glass, I think. I thought that was just one big series, but no, apparently it's two. Um, I do have a couple of the books on my shelves because I see them in charity shops for like a pound and I'm like, well, I might as well buy it and give it a go. But to be honest, I'm not that interested in reading them. I don't know if I will ever get around to it. I see so many polarizing opinions and it's like, you have to have read it 10 years ago for it to be good. So I think I'm probably past the point in my life when I would enjoy it. The final question is a bit of a weak one to end on for me because it is which book has a better film or TV adaptation? And I don't really watch many adaptations that I know of and I tend not to read books after I've seen a film come out of it or I tend not to watch a series if I've read the book first. So I don't really know. Although having said that, I have watched the first Shadow and Bone episode and it does elevate the books a lot. Obviously I love Lee Bardugo and I love Six of Crows. That duology is fantastic. But I thought the Grisha trilogy was very basic. I think I gave it like three stars probably. Um, I do have loads of copies of it because I have a Lee Bardugo shelf and I have I just pick them up in charity shops or find them cheap. And I like to have as many copies, like different copies of her books as I can. But I do think that the show from the one episode I saw is better than the Grisha trilogy because it brings in all these other characters. It is such a richly imagined world and it comes off so well on the screen. So I think that is better than the book, probably. <laughs> I have not finished that series though, uh, the TV series. So I will need to finish that, but I think they've done a great job with it from what I've seen and from what I see people say about it. That's the only one I can think of really. Like even the old classics, I haven't seen any of The Hobbit or Lord of the Rings and I've never read the books. Oh, actually I can think of one, um, Crazy Rich Asians. I tried reading the book and I just couldn't really get into it and I just thought it was really dense and quite boring, but I loved the film. Like yeah, it's kind of cheesy and <clears throat> the cat is sitting on my laptop. Excuse me, can you not do that please? <sniffs> Naughty girl. Anyway, yeah, Crazy Rich Asians film, I loved. Yeah, it was silly and over the top, but I really enjoyed it. It was a fun watch and I couldn't get into the books. So that definitely is a much better adaptation for me. So yeah, those are my unpopular book opinions tag. Um, I don't know how unpopular some of these will be. I think probably a lot of people are going to disagree with me about Scythe because that seems to be really popular. <laughs> so yeah, I, I want to make more sort of tag videos like this. So if you have any tags that you want me to do, just let me know down below. Otherwise, I'm just going to find some that sound good to me and film them. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please leave a little book emoji down at the bottom if you've made it this far. And I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.